Hey foodie friends, the Dietary Guidelines for Americans just came out this past Wednesday the 7th. Lots of media about this and a lot of consensus about some solid issues. So vegetables and fruits, whole grains, eat less added sugar, fewer processed foods. That's all solid science. But there's some interesting twists to this round of Dietary Guidelines. Talks about more red meat, more saturated fat, cooking with beef tallow and butter. And I have to say, I'm taking this extremely personally. I had the honor of serving on the Dietary Guidelines Advisory Committee. This was a group of 20 scientists that went through a, a vetting process. We got selected in back in 2023. We served for two years, all of 2023 and 2024. We met at least twice a week. We went to Washington, D.C. six times. We had a staff of more than 30 federal employees helping us search the literature for all the new evidence that had accumulated since the last time the 2020 guidelines came out. We were tasked with answering 60 different questions that were pre-selected for us. We had to come to consensus. There was a very rigorous, thorough, systematic process of identifying what papers to search for and how to grade them. And we ended up generating a 420 page report with a thousand page supplement that was submitted to the secretaries of Agriculture and Health and Human Services in December of 2024. That happened to be just about the same time the administration was turning over in our country. And the new head of Health and Human Services was RFK Jr., who very publicly looked at these and responded in social media that they would be dismissed and not utilized. This was very hurtful. The 20 of us had all volunteered probably a thousand hours each over the past two years to serve on this committee. They said they thought they were too complicated, they thought there was too much bias, and that they would create new dietary guidelines that would be simpler and more helpful. And now we have them. They're not really simpler, in fact, there's quite a few internal inconsistencies in the material that they've shared, but I tell you what is just absolutely infuriating is that after being criticized for conflicts of interest, a new smaller committee was chosen that's already been outed as having even more direct ties to the Cattlemen's Association and the Dairy Council and Big Food than any of us were. They did it in a shorter amount of time there's less documentation. Our group had to do everything very publicly and very transparently. There's been almost no transparency and no public vetting of any of this. And the final gut punch to this whole thing was reading finally just yesterday, some of their material got released to show the foundation of how they come up with these new recommendations. And oddly, the, the rationale for what they did starts with an explanation of why they dismissed the report that 20 of us worked on for two years. And they said the primary concern was that we used a health equity lens to look at science. <clears throat> so this is absolutely completely baffling. The dietary guidelines for Americans are for all Americans, not white affluent Americans of Northern European descent. That's why you need to be sensitive to things like dairy recommendations for the three quarters of the world that's lactose intolerant. We were trying to take into account indigenous populations, Native Americans, really trying to be very inclusive. And to read that one of the reasons our work was dismissed was because of using a health equity lens. I have to say in most cases, using that lens wasn't all that helpful because in reviewing our data, those kinds of facts had to be collected. We had to have good race ethnicity data, good socioeconomic status data, and quite a few of the papers that we retrieved from the past didn't have great data. So even though we made very serious attempts to include that when we could, it was often the case that we couldn't seriously address it. And in most cases, we said maybe future federal funding should be tied to making sure that that kind of data is available if someone were to want to look at it that way. So it's just, I'm incensed, I'm infuriated, I'm, I'm depressed that after two years of volunteer work, our report was dismissed. Uh, another report was put together that's shorter, fewer people, more ties, less public transparency, 
and they've created a new food icon where red meat and butter and lard and, and saturated fat take more of a primary position and things like whole grains are relegated to be a very small portion of the U.S. diet. This is not science. This is dangerous. This is political. This is ideological. We went through a very thorough, systematic scientific process, and science is under attack here. I, I don't know how this isn't going to confuse the public, and I'm very concerned about trying to respond to this because that feels like a no-win situation. If we respond and explain what we think is wrong, I'm pretty sure it will also confuse the public. So I hope we find ways to communicate this effectively. There are many areas of consensus with the new report that came out, but there are some serious concerns and that's being covered by a lot of professional organizations right now. So stay tuned. That's my take on it.